Hello friends, this video on visualizing solid shapes part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now when we talk about isometric sketching, it is like more accurate in, in terms of dimensions, it is more accurate than the uh, oblique sketch. So in isometric sketch, it not only resembles a specific shape, but also with dimensions in proportion to the actual object. So here obviously, since it is more accurate, so definitely it resembles the shape, but at the same time here the dimensions are proportional to the actual object. Now, what do we mean by proportional? Now, proportional doesn't mean equal. For example, you want to draw a cube of uh, side 3 centimeters. Now, when you draw it, so let us understand how this isometric sketch is different from oblique sketch. Now in oblique sketch, it, it's all with inaccurate dimensions. So you are not sure if, if let's say that you want to draw a cube of side 3 centimeters. Now in, in an oblique sketch, you are not sure if the side is exactly 3 centimeters. You are also not sure if all the sides are equal or not. So basically, you, you are not sure whether the dimensions are accurate. You are also not sure if the dimensions are actually in proportion to the actual object. But in case of isometric sketch, even if the dimension is not measuring exactly 3 centimeters, but it is ensured that the length of each side of the cube is equal. So that proportionality is maintained. So let's say that if um, you have to draw a cuboid of size, let's say the length is 4 centimeters and the width is 2 centimeters. So even if we do not draw a rectangle with length 4 and width 2 centimeters, but at least we draw it in the same ratio. That is, if we draw the length as 2 centimeters, we draw the width as 1 centimeter. So basically, we maintain the ratio, and that's how we draw proportional objects. So in order to do these kind of isometric sketching, we make use of a special type of paper which is called isometric dot paper or isometric dot sheet. So what is so special about this sheet is that it is made up of small equilateral triangles. Now I'm sure all of you know what is an equilateral triangle. A triangle whose all the sides are equal. So when you look at it, this is an equilateral triangle. All the three sides are equal. Similarly, this is an equilateral triangle. This is an equilateral. So this entire sheet is actually made up of equilateral triangles. So instead of having the triangles, we just have the points. The, the points represent the three vertices of the equilateral triangle. So this is how the isometric sheet is designed. Now you might ask that why do we have this kind of arrangement in an isometric sheet? That's because in when we are drawing isometric sketches, we are worried about the measurements. Now we, we need some standard in order to make those measurements. Now if we take an equilateral triangle, we know that all the sides are equal. So basically this proves that if you consider any point, let's say I consider this point, that would mean that this length of the side, this length, this length, this length, this length and this length, all of these lengths would be equal. That's because all of these are equilateral triangles of the same dimensions. So this would actually mean that every point that you see on the screen, let's consider this point. So this point is at equal distances from all the six neighboring points. So that is the beauty of this arrangement. So, so therefore what happens is, let's say you want to draw a cube or a cuboid or not only cube and cuboid, you want to draw a house, you want to draw a tree, whatever you want to draw. So you even if you cannot measure and draw 10 centimeters, but you can always consider 10 centimeters assuming this as a unit. Let's say that you consider this as 1 centimeter. So if you have to draw 10 centimeters, what you do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So you consider this as 10 centimeters. So basically this is considered as a unit. So since you make use of this sheet, what happens is whatever you draw is as per the proportion of the measurements which are given for that solid object. So this allows us to draw an object in three dimensions. Now, how are the three dimensions represented in an isometric sketch? So what are the three dimensions involved? So one would be the vertical line. So this is one dimension. So it's not straight, but actually it meant to be straight. 
So let's say this is one dimension, which is drawn vertically. So that, that's our one dimension. What, what are the other dimensions? Now there are two, this is the vertical dimension. Now what about the horizontal ones? Now there are two horizontal dimensions involved. Think of a cube. So you have the length, you have the height, you also have the width. So the length and the width both fall under the category of horizontal. So in this case what we do, we represent the horizontal ones not exactly horizontally but slightly in between horizontal and vertical, somewhat like this. So this is how we try to represent the horizontal ones. So you would see that how this helps. Now, why we do not represent the horizontal axis exactly along the horizontal axis? Because this would have been the real horizontal axis, right? But why don't we represent it like that? That's because if we start representing it exactly vertical, exactly horizontal, then it will not give the 3D effect. So in order to give the 3D effect, the vertical lines are drawn vertically, but the horizontal lines are drawn at an angle to the baseline. So if you consider this as the baseline, we draw the horizontal angle horizontal lines at some angle. So this gives the dimension, the three-dimensional view. So it will become more clear as we start making isometric sketches of certain um, objects, certain three-dimensional objects. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.